In this section, the last section in our course on testing, we're going to talk about executing and creating load tests. So what exactly are you going to learn in this particular section? Well, we're going to start out by creating load tests, and we're going to show you how to create them and run them within the Visual Studio environment. Then we're going to move on to analyzing the results. So now that we ran it, we get some results back. What do those results actually mean? So let's go and find out what the meaning of those are. Then we're going to go and show you how you edit load tests. So not every what load test to start with has ever is perfect, and you're going to need to make modifications to it. Uh, so we want to show you how we go about editing those. And then lastly, we're going to look at load test in the cloud. It's Microsoft's load testing service in the cloud. And it makes it a lot easier for you to have to be able to uh, spin up and spin down test machines in the cloud. It's a lot easier. Uh, you don't have to worry about having all that hardware uh, yourself. So we're going to talk about how you do load test in the cloud in that last part. In this particular video, we're going to show you how you go about creating and running one. So what will you learn? Well, it's going to be, like I stated earlier, mostly demos. We're going to talk about creating and running a load test. We're going to show you how you go about setting these up in Visual Studio and how you go ahead and run those in Visual Studio. So before we jump in, this is just a screenshot. Some of the things you're going to be able to do when you create and run load tests is state the load that you want to put on the particular test. So you can put on a constant load of users or you can have a step load and we'll talk about that. And you can tell from this image, well, there's other things we're going to work with here like your test mix. What tests are we actually going to run load against? So in the last section we created some web tests. And, and so now we're going to take those web tests and we're going to actually put load against them and see how they're going to respond once we put a lot of load on our web tests. So let's just move over into the demo environment and we'll talk all about setting up your load test and then we'll run one. Hi and welcome in the demo environment. Let's go about talking how you're going to go about creating and running a load test in Visual Studio. You'll notice on the right side here in my Solution Explorer that we have my solution open and we have my web tests project, the one we've been working with. Those are my two web tests that we want to put some load on. So what the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to right click on my solution. I'm going to want to add a new project of type load test and web test. So right here, the web performance and load test project, select OK. It's going to add it to my solution. Let's look at it real quick here. Adds the necessary references. And you see it has a web test in there by default. We're going to delete that web test. Go ahead. We don't need it. And we're going to actually right click on the project name and we're going to code to the add option. And we're going to add a load test. Since we don't care about the web test in this particular project, we care about the load. You're going to be presented with an option when you first set up the load test. So whenever you add a load test to the project, you're going to get the wizard, the new load test wizard. And so we have an option to either go with the cloud-based load test in the cloud or we can do on-premises. So I'm going to do the on-premise load test and I'm going to select next. And this is where we come with the duration. By default, it, it defaults to five minutes. Of course, you can raise or lower that. For the sake of this video, I'm going to push it down to two minutes. You can also do it by test iterations and you could do like a hundred iterations of that particular test. Uh, you know, so I'm going to just do it two minutes. That'll be fine because it may take longer to do the iterations than it would the test itself in the two minute time frame. And then sampling will be done every 15 seconds. I'm going to turn that down to every five seconds. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm getting really good sampling, especially since I'm only running it for two minutes. I want to see that data being returned to me very quickly in the charts. Save the log on test failure. Yes, we do. And then any validation rules. Validation rules are rules in the web tests that are validating a particular value in a test or a particular text is in the test. It's a validation rule of some sort, validating that when the web test ran, there was a specific item we were looking for and we found it or it was supposed to respond in a specific way and we got the response we expected in the time we expected. So those are validation rules. It validated that it responded within the three second time frame or whatever. So there's, there's a few different ways you can do that, but those are the validation tests. And you set those to low, medium, or high depending on their priorities. And if I select the high one, it's going to invoke all the different validation tests that I have in my web test project. Maybe I only care about the medium ones. And this will just return me the medium and low ones, not the high ones at this time. So let's leave it at that. And we're going to go next. 
Now we're going to give it a scenario name. I'll just leave scenario one. And now you can use recorded think times, think times being the amount of time it takes to perform the task on the particular site. So when I click a link or I purchase an item and put it in the cart, it all takes some time and it takes you time to think about what it is you want to do. So we're going to use those are what the recorded think times are. Uh, and I'm going to use normal distribution centered on recorded think times. Uh, it's going to distribute it based on the think times that have been recorded. I can also not use record the think times at all if I choose not to, but I think that doesn't make it as realistic as it should be. And the think time between iterations is zero. We're not going to wait between we, the time when one ends and one starts. Now we're going to put on the load on this particular test. So we can do 25 users by default. Again, we can raise that amount uh, as long as you have the ability to run these types of users on the hardware you have. If your hardware can, can stand, you know, 150 users or, or 5,000 users, you know, you can do that, but you just got to be careful about what your hardware is able to support. Or you can step load it. So in this particular version, I'm going to go and do the constant load. If we did a step load, you would start out the test using 10 users. And every duration, every 10 seconds, it would add 10 more people to the test. So 10 more users would be added every 10 seconds until we reach a maximum user count of 200. Or if the test runs ends first. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the constant load. And I'm going to do... I think I'm going to raise this up. Let's go up to 100 users. I think that would be fine. And let's uh, go next. And now, what's our text mix? So what's our test mix going to look like? Based on the number of virtual users? Or is it based on the total number of tests? So if it's based on the total number of tests, uh, basically it tests as each user is starting their particular test. And it says at the end of the load test, the number of times that a particular test is run matches the assigned test distribution. So this is a model you can follow if you choose to. And it says down here that you can follow this model when you are basing this text, test mix on transaction percentages. Next one is based on the number of virtual users. I'm going to base mine on the number of virtual users. And basically, it determines the percentage of virtual users that will run each particular test that I put into the test mix. And then again, we could do it on user pace. Uh, so again, we do this as a virtual users are running through the test at a particular pace. Uh, we could do it that way. And based on sequential test order. And that means we're going to run each test and cycle through all the tests until a load test is complete. So with this one, I'm going to go back to the based on a number of virtual users. Go next. Now here's where I have to add the tests. So I'm going to click on add and you'll notice it sees my two tests over here. Actually three. I remember in previous videos we turned the web test two into a coded web test. I'm going to select uh, one and I'm going to select two. And that, that's all we need to add. You can see it automatically sets the distribution to 50 and 50. So I could actually change these. Something like that mix. I can lock them so that way then I can't move. If I add a third one, it'll be the only thing that I can adjust. So what this is saying is I'm going to lock this in, you know, at 78% or 75%. I don't want any other tests that get added to this. We're going to have to, you know, equal 100% based on web test one and another test that I might add. So we're just going to leave it at this. And I'm going to lock both of them now. You don't have to lock them. I choose to. Then we're going to select our network types. And you can have multiple network types. As you can see from this drop down, we have everything from 3G all the way up to dial up modems. So you can do and a lot of in betweens there. So you can see we have DSL and we have WANs and intercontinental WANs and intracontinental WANs. So it just all depends on what do you suspect your users are going to be experiencing when they run the application. Uh, in their environment. So does the user have slow internet? If so, maybe we go to cable DSL at 1.5 megs. Obviously in today's world, there's a heck of a lot more megs being pushed out uh, by ISPs. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at the LAN and I'm going to go next. 
It's going to ask me what browser type do I want to use. Again, I have various browsers I can actually use in here. Everything all the way up to Explorer 11 or Firefox 3. I'm just going to leave it at Explorer 9. And again, you could add another browser in here. And then again, the tests will mix between the two browsers. And do I want to add any computers and counter sets to monitor? So by default, we have the controller and we have the agent. And I can add a computer. It already added my computer that I'm working on. You would add your test rigs in here and it would capture the load test and the agent data and all that's going on on your test. So you can go here and add your computer and you can give it a name. So we're gonna call this uh, test, that's fine. And you can see what do we wanna actually start capturing? Well, we wanna capture, maybe it's an ASP.NET application and maybe we have a SQL Server on it. IIS is important. So let's just capture those for now. And last thing we'll do is finish. It goes out and it generates this load test for us. As you can see now, we have, let me close this down a little bit to give you an idea of what we're looking at. We have the test settings, we have the scenario, and we have the counter sets. So the test settings are basically everything that we just set up. The counter sets, the controller machine, the agent machine, and, and the location. So, and we'll then that there. And then you have the scenario. This is the mix. This is gonna be web tests we're gonna run, the user counts, browser mix, network mix. And you can see here where you're doing a constant load pattern. And then lastly, we have the counter sets. What are we actually capturing? And you can see here, there's a, a wide variety of ASP.NET counters we can capture. IIS, we can capture quite a few. And the uh, SQL realm, we can capture a bunch too. So now that's gonna capture all that data for us and track it as we work through this web, this load test loading, testing our web tests. So with that done, I'm gonna go ahead and just run this. I'm gonna go up to the top toolbar here and I'm gonna click on run test. And basically it's gonna go out and run the test. And this is telling me that I have a lot of test results. And so I'm, I'm not worried about that. That just warns me that it's gonna kick the last one off the stack and when, when this one runs. So I can only have 25 lo uh, tests in my stack at a time. So you can see here, here's the load test you know, information board. Uh, it's telling us all the information that's going on. Now you see here, I actually set my duration or my polling sampling to five, five seconds. And you'll notice here on the charts, then we get pretty responsive data because it's actually checking every five seconds and giving us back some data. So I wanted to especially see this when we were doing the uh, load test with only a two minute test. I wanted you to be able to see the results being produced by it. And you can notice here we have certain items down here that are being tracked, like the number of requests, number of failed requests. Over here, we have processor time. And it basically click on these and it highlights them. Percentage of processor time on the controllers or agents. That's down here. And you can see in the bottom right corner, it's the controllers and agents graph. And we can select that. The system under test, there's nothing there right now. And the last one being up top here is this page response test and the key indicators. So I can see here the user load, the average page time, threshold violations, if there are any. So you can see you get quite a bit of information. On this page response time, it's actually telling me for each particular request that's made, here's your response time. So my, you can see when I clicked on, you know, paulhacker.net, it's a get it's actually increased very well um, and, and that's not such a good thing. Um, the average page time should be lower. So again, we wanna make sure that those responses are coming back as low as possible. You can also click on the charts and it'll take you to that particular section also. So that's it, we've run the test. Uh, you can see there's no time remaining. It's gonna wrap up here and it's gonna give us a summary screen. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and do that while it's wrapping up here and we'll come right back and see that summary screen. Okay, so it finished and we have our summary screen. You can tell it gave us a, quite a bit of information here. In fact, it's kind of almost like information overload. Okay, so what did you learn in this particular video? Well, we discussed creating and running a load test 
And as you saw from the demo, we actually walked through quite a bit of the information that you're going to get back, showed you how you go about setting up a basic load test to do some work for you, uh, and ran it against the two web tests that we had already created in previous sections.